So we're going to look at the market for currency exchange now. Um, this market for currency exchange, there's different ways of analyzing what will be the actual exchange rate. Uh, I'll show you the way that it's shown in the textbook. I'll show you a way that's shown in other textbooks, which I like uh, to represent uh, certain stories. All in all, you, you have to remember that uh, the different things that we'll see in the next section of factors affecting supply and demand, there's different factors that will uh, alter the value of a currency. Uh, and that's really what's most important. When it comes to drawing it graphically, um, what do you draw it one way or the other? I, I'm not too fussed about it. It's just, uh, we're, we use models and economics to represent reality. And uh, one way represents it well for certain stores, the other way represents it well for other stores. But all in all, it's the same kind of setup. So just keep that in mind when you'll see these two different ways uh, right now. So essentially, why does the market for foreign exchange exist? Well, when you want to buy good services, financial assets from other countries, those people that uh, you buy from want to be paid in the currency, uh, in their own currency. So at the equilibrium real exchange rate, the demand for dollars to buy net export exactly balances the supply of dollars to be exchanged into the foreign currency to buy assets abroad. That's the way that uh, they kind of represent it. Uh, my way it's just a little bit different. So let's just see their way. Their way here, they're talking about net capital outflow and here net exports. That's the way they represent it. You'll see my way will be slightly different. And they're talking about real exchange rate where I'll be talking more about the, the nominal exchange rate. Uh, but essentially what they're saying is that the supply of dollars from net capital outflow does not change when you have a vertical line is it's for any of these things on the vertical axis you have the same amount so what it means is it's completely independent so the supply of dollars is independent of the real exchange rate is what they're saying because uh, the supply of dollars depends on that relationship between r and rw so what kind of relationship do we have is it this one, this one, or this one, what kind of situation do we have? Is it greater, smaller, equal? What is it? So it's one of those relationships that's going to lead to this certain amount of net capital outflow. Whereas the real exchange rate, your purchasing power in one country versus the other will heavily influence your demand for net exports. If your real exchange rate is really high, well, it means that it's very costly uh, to buy goods uh, abroad so essentially that's the kind of situation that we've got going on and then we'll have this uh, real exchange rate that's determined by this equilibrium I personally like to set up a graph that has the demand for Canadian dollars so CAD will be for Canadian dollars and in this situation here, let's just keep it simple. Let's just think that's Canada and the US. So here I'd have the demand for Canadian dollars is equal to the supply of US dollars. And you'll understand how that works in a sec. And here we have the supply of Canadian dollars is equal to the demand for US dollars. Um, and then over here, what I want to have is I want to have an exchange rate on this axis here. And I want it to be that the higher up you go, if I go in this direction, it's that the Canadian dollar is appreciating it is my goal because I'd like to see it that way. If I have it represented that it's, as it goes up, the Canadian dollar is depreciating, it doesn't really work for me. So like I said before, there's two ways you could represent the currency. It's either Canadian dollars over US or US over Canadian. Take a second and ask yourself, for this to be in this direction that as I go up, Canadian dollars appreciating, which one should it be? Think about it. And your answer should be, well, this is the amount of US dollar per Canadian dollar, or that small E that we had that I said that we'll focus on. Because here, let's say if, I, if I'm over here, this may be that um, I get uh, 0.78 US dollar per Canadian dollar. Over here, I get one full US dollar per Canadian dollar. Over here, I get like 1.3 
down here I get 0 0.5 so naturally the more US dollar per Canadian dollar I could obtain the more the Canadian currency is appreciating and this would be our equilibrium interest rate uh, exchange rate why do I say that these two are linked well assuming that we only have two countries then when there is a certain amount of demand for Canadian dollars it's when these foreigners want to buy some of our goods or services or assets so they're going to supply their currency as they demand our currency if you're going to go travel to vietnam and when you want to buy a vietnamese good you're going to supply canadian dollars and you're going to demand their currency so there's always this switch because as soon as you want to get someone else's currency you can't just say i want vietnamese uh, currency do you have anything in exchange no no, you always have to supply something. So in this situation here, that's the demand for Canadian supply of Canadian. If you forget how to set this up, uh, just think about that. Ideally, this direction, Canadian dollars appreciating. I've seen it in other textbooks that it's the opposite direction. They set up differently and they, they alternate these and uh, shift these two curves around. I like to set up this way so that when I'll say, well, all of a sudden there's a sudden increase in demand for Canadian products. Uh, for some reason, there's a big increase in demand for Canadian products. Well, when that happens, I would expect the Canadian currency to appreciate. If we're providing a certain good, whether it's a remedy for cancer or something else, if a lot of people from around the world want to buy this good and they can only buy it in Canadian dollars, there's going to be a large increase in demand for Canadian dollars, which is going to make our currency rise. So through this, you could kind of understand whether the different factors that will um, increase or decrease the value of our currency. Here I'm talking about nominal exchange rate. They do it a little bit differently. Either way you see it works. Uh, I'll focus on this way later on when I'll be talking about uh, exchange rate types and fixed exchange rates. Uh, but when we look at changes in equilibrium later on, there'll, there'll be a series of examples you guys could go through uh, that will be done in the textbook way, uh, textbook sections from it in there. So uh, next up, we're just going to look at different factors that could shift these things around uh, just to get a good idea of different things that could lead to an appreciation or a depreciation of the currency.